Well, hi, Floor. It's great to follow up with you again. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Daya. Thank you for hosting this and, and recording uh, this session. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, this is going to be wonderful. I often get a lot of com uh, questions and comments about ChatGPT and what it's doing in the legal industry. So I'm delighted to actually talk to someone who's like right in there and can answer some really juicy questions for us. So um, you've been starting this program, this organizing for innovation and using uh, generative a AI and chat GPT specifically for specifically for law firms. And that's, you know, that's both of our, both of our service areas. So I'm just wondering like, like why, why, how, how did this come about? Why is this program uh, been your, been your, your own personal creative project for the last couple of years? Well, it kind of came about because when Chat TPT came out, and I don't know, you have tried it, and for the audience too, if you haven't tried it, I definitely recommend trying it because it is pretty amazing. You suddenly have your computer talking back to you in a pretty decent fashion. So I was just amazed uh, by the technology. And as with any new technology, like right thereafter, you got all the all what couldn't be done with it. So I think if we see now, like we're, in, what is it, nine months later, um, the waters are a lot less clear and um, a lot of fear has has started to rise, like about insulations, about security, about IP theft. Um, but that does not, like, it's a great technology. And I think if you look way back in the times of steam engines and electricity, you also share that, that first initial deep fear about something new. And I think that's a bit in the stage where we're now at. And I would love, like, for everything when, when it comes to new technology, using it and trying it and applying it to a business need <laughs> will, we'll, uh, in the end, um, that's how technologies transform the world so that's what we would love for people to do like stop just talking about it or being afraid for it but just explore what can you do with it which business problem could it solve for you yeah that, 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 yeah can you use it as a productivity tool um can you address your staffing shortages um could it be a replacement or an add-on for your uh, client portal so what what business problem can it really solve mm -hmm. Absolutely, and that's that's all why why we're here. We want to make the lives of our our, our lawyer uh, clients and law firms much more successful um, by automating some things, giving people back that uh, the time that they need. And of course, it's it's been fun to play with. When um, someone first introduced me to it, it was it was literally like something to have a conversation with. Um, you know, almost like the. Um, that thing that sits in our corner and listens to us all the time and tells tells us what we need to order. That was kind of our companion, was at least my companion uh, at the beginning of the pandemic when I was still living alone. I think I talked to her a lot more than I should have. <laughs> um, so this um, this new technology is, is coming into our life now. And sometimes it's like a fun thing, but what we really, really want to do is make it a, a business, a business use. Absolutely. Saving time. And so like you mentioned, you mentioned productivity. Can you um can you share a little bit more about using it as a productivity tool? Well, I think that's one of the things people need to figure it out on their own. Um, what can it do for you? And and where are you struggling with uh, productivity? But I can take you for an ex an example of the program we have run and why I thought that running a special chat GPT program would be an excellent idea. So in the past, we had like someone that was, it was during the pandemic, was totally overworked. And uh, amongst others, because um, WhatsApp was bugging her 24 seven. And she just felt like I'm working 24 seven, but I don't get the things done that need to be done. And I'm not a success coach like you are. <laughs> So we, we look this more at from like a an, an business perspective, like what could she do and change in her workflows? And so that's what we first helped to help her work with her on helping understand like what makes that she's busy 24 seven and prevents her from doing the work that she really wanted to do. Well, there were a variety of things in her team. We then went to her um, IT department to ask what solutions they had already had in-house that could help her. Microsoft Teams was in her case, so not yet DPT, was in her case uh, the solution. And we helped her then set up an experiment. So how could she transfer her team to start using uh, Microsoft Teams? 
set it up, ran it for two weeks, or tough two weeks to transition from one technology to the next. But at the end of the two weeks, the team was so satisfied with, and they also such an increase in their productivity that they never looked back. And even more better for the uh, for the firm um, is a year later, nearly all lawyers had converted because based on her story, they saw what teams actually could do. And they had like a way of getting from A to B, like how do you implement teams? Like knowing what it can do for you is one thing, but then implementing it in your own workflow, that's another. So they, they had now a use case for both how you could do it. And it freed up so much time that when I ran into her at Iltacon last year, she was pursuing her PhD, for the, her uh, MBA. So yeah, talking wow. about the time creator. <laughs> Yeah, she freed up a lot of time. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So we have had participants from in, a, in that program, we call it a project program, come back to us and, and ask us, like, can you help us also with figuring out chat GPT? Because one of the things we focus very much on in this program, and, and the example of, of Teams may be a nice one, it was not about Teams. It was about a problem and then looking at the business problem and then coming up with a solution. So it could be when you participate in our chat GPT program that you figure out that chat GPT is not for you or that another solution that you already have uh, works better to solve the business problem. So we try to kind of like reverse it back, like what business problem can chat GPT solve for you and for your firm and, and for your clients? Yeah, I love this. I love how it goes hand in hand with the work that I do with with my clients. A lot of times they're they they don't know what the problems are, so we're identifying the problems, and then now to have some solutions, some things that can, they can try. Again, not one size fits all, um, but they can try. You know, it might be just a a, a um, practice management software that they might need, or they may need to you know get an administrative assistant or an outsourced virtual assistant or something like that. Um, so we don't know. We don't know yet. So those are the conversations that that I'm having on my side. And then on your side, you're like, OK, we've, we're identifying the problems and now we can actually present you some solutions. So, oh, I love this. This is great. Um, so what about you also mentioned um, and I think this is this is um, nationwide and industry industry wide or industry agnostic, these staffing shortages. Um, but in our law firms, my small law firms and you with uh, midsize and larger law firms, this has become a real issue. Um, how are you seeing generative AI uh, addressing some of that? Well, generative AI can do a lot of things uh, from, yeah, responding, to, helping you draft emails, helping you draft, of course, it's a text-based program. So so responding to text and, and responding to emails is probably the first one, but it can also be do videos. Um, I think in that sense, people really need to figure out the technology for themselves, like what it can do. Um, where we can help is help you figure out like the, the business case, so to speak, especially if you start using it to help your clients. But even internally, um, there is a free version of ChatGPT, but there is also paid versions. And there are also all kinds of add-ons on ChatGPT that makes it much smarter, much safer. Um, but they cost money. So does that make sense to make that investment or not? So that's what we, in, in the 12 weeks of the program, will help you figure out. First, in two weeks, define what the project is about, like put some boundaries, like, hey, the sky is the limit, but it's not. There's only so much time and, and resources that you have. So, um, and you need to bring it back to something that is doable, especially if you're a small law firm. So what could you do? Uh, what problem are you planning on solving? And how? what is the timeline you have in mind? And then um, we'll then help you look at some of the financials. Because in the end, like you need to invest time. You need, may need to invest some resources. You need to explore perhaps some solutions. So that's also why it's an, like a an, an hybrid program in the sense that like, we tailor every single participant get they get their own tailored journey through a set of modules. Um, but in this case, we'll also have group sessions where we discuss like common challenges because we've heard from some of our clients like there is our insurance issues. Clearly there are cyber issues. There are hallucination issues. Those were things that will be challenges everyone runs into. Um, so those are some of the things we may run as a group, but you will follow your own individual path in our program because not, every single project is different. Yeah. Okay, great. I would love to, um, I know we've, I've got 
oodles of questions here, but I would love to, as we just open the door on the program, um, know a little bit more about it. You know, so digging in, digging into that program, if you, if you will, for us. Okay, so it's, it's basically for individuals or teams, uh, up to five people, who collaboratively uh, want to formulate the business case and, and create plans around generative AI or chat GPT. But the focus is really about the business imperative, not the technology itself. So how can we make it work for your firm and your clients and your or your practice group? And then the program itself, it offers structure, guidance, and metrics. So um, we've had many teams go through the program and in about two weeks, um, we helped them define the project description. Then the business case takes anywhere between six to 12 uh, weeks. We now have a full program, 12 weeks to create that business case. And where you probably will be spending some time, we'll help you de-risk from a market perspective from a solution perspective, from an organization perspective and a project perspective. So you may, for instance, decide to interview a few clients, especially if you're gonna generate a client facing tool, or you may uh, sit together with some of your current admins if you want to use it as a workflow tool, like how do they currently do it? And if you would were to use ChatGPT, how could you use it? So that's what will take a bit of time in that business case. So that the, at the end of the 12 week program, you have not only you know what you will be doing, how you're going to do it, and have a timeline on to get it done. So that's kind of like the, the end goal we want in 12 weeks to um, to come up. And hopefully that nicely aligns with the budget season so you have can get approval for what you want to do in 2024. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, just like in coaching, you kind of got to know where you're going before you... Uh, pull the trigger and invest on something because you're right this might not be a this might not be a good fit for every every lawyer or every firm so no. great to go through yeah. that whole program yeah. yeah so wonderful and it sounds like there's a lot of structure to it uh, a lot of metrics you get a lot of feedback and um yeah so like some of my clients are solo solo practitioners, um, and but it but and also up to you know mid sized firms. So, do you see this being more for um, people that have a team at work already? Not necessarily, but just pursuing an idea takes work. You, I can't, I can't make it any, <laughs> and I don't want to. I want to be everyone, I want everyone to be successful. So it takes work to explore if an idea is something, if a new technology is something, uh, figure out workflows, etc. So what we see is that teams on average put in anywhere between three to five hours a week. If you need to do that on your own, that's quite a time commitment. So that's why um, we, on the platform, we allow you to invite up to four others. So you can work with five on an idea. More people does not make it faster. We see that the fastest teams have about two to three people. Um, but innovation is a team sport. It's like when you write like your own essay, it all makes sense. Till an editor reads it and it was like, well, there are some disconnects. And that's what we see in innovation projects as well. In your head, it all makes sense because you see all the connections. But if you need to write it down, you may describe the elephant by just describing the, the uh, its paws or its tail and forgetting that the trunk and the ears are so obvious for you that you even forget to write about it. And that's the advantage. If you collaborate with someone else, you can have this back and forth and, and to make sure that everyone understands what you're trying to do and it will make your ideas better and sharper. So I definitely can recommend, again, we said like it's a tailored journey. So we can even help you build a team in the program if you, if you are on your own and are seeking someone to help you out. Oh, that's great. That's a that's a wonderful idea and a, a definite advantage to to getting in there and 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 working with this to see pretty much see where your where your holes are, you know, what parts of my org chart are completely missing, uh, and which which can be filled uh, with technology. Yeah. Um, so what's it what's it gonna actually like look like? So if I'm if I'm boots on the ground with you starting the uh, the organizing for innovation program, what does that look like? Oh, Diane, that's such a good question. Again, like that's my uh, elephant without the trunk and the ears. <laughs> <laughs> so um, on August 
first, we start with the kickoff meeting and that will be just a general session to just explain the basics, um, demonstrate a bit of the, the platform and just get everyone up to speed. But as I mentioned, like everyone will have their own tailored journey on the platform. So you can work through it at your own speed, um, follow your own tailored journey and work on the things that are important for you and your project. Um, then it starts out with a tailored set of uh, modules where we really enable you to look at the problem from all different uh, aspects. And there we kind of follow Einstein's mantra. If I had to come up with a solution in one hour, I would spend 55 minutes on understanding the problem and five minutes on spending finding the solution. So that's what we do in the program as well. We really look at it from all different angles, as I mentioned, from the market, from the organization, from the solution and the project perspective to make sure that you that you have all your uh, everything covered, so to speak, and that there are not um, areas or blind spots that pop up later, and that can be very costly. Um, so, uh, and I lost my train of thought here. <laughs> I was explaining okay. the, the the program. So you you will start with these kind of like defined um, educational modules first that explain you like. How do you define users? How do you define the job they're looking? How, how do you define the problem if that's uh, more, um, uh, more an issue for you? And once you have that problem solution fit or are pretty comfortable about, about it, then we can go kind of continue with detailing out the business case. But front and center throughout the program, we'll focus on like, what problem are you solving? Because we know if there's not an, a strong business imperative, if it's not like, if the trigger to change is not big enough, you will run into adoption challenges, even if it's just you. <laughs> but if it doesn't give you enough benefits, it will be very difficult to stay on that routine. So yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially, I'll say, especially if it's just you. <laughs> Especially if it's just you. Yeah, so we have like, uh, and that, that brings an important moment. Um, so one of the things we say, well, engagement is one thing. The second, second thing for success is momentum. We want you to keep moving. So we'll have weekly one-on-one -on -one sessions with all the teams that give you feedback on how you're doing and what to do next. So you never have to think about like, yeah, or plan or the program will just kind of guide you literally through to until you have the business case uh, 12 weeks after you have started so that um so there are one-on-one -on -one sessions and then we have as i mentioned like some group sessions to address more general um general themes throughout the program yeah group sessions are great i, I do those with my clients as well and it, they bring up uh, they peer, they peer coach each other more than you know, more like facilitating the conversation because uh, they're bringing, bringing all the background um, from all the diversity of the group. It's, um, it's great. So, well, yeah, and it's so. also always nice to see like, yeah, sometimes you're struggling with things and these struggles, everyone is having these struggles. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So. Like, always ask your question because someone else is, is having it, but not asking it. So absolutely yeah great um and i just had a specific question something that came to mind to me earlier um before we went into the program but like a lot of people are using case management software with client portals so they're building that into their website um i mean is this and i think we've all used or all interacted with bots and ai in customer service realms is this something you could see lawyers adapting Definitely. Like in that sense, the sky is the limit. Like it is a new technology. Um, there are many, many ways to explore. And I think especially for small firms, it it can yeah, make you look like a much bigger firm <laughs> by okay. utilizing technology and, and interacting and being much more responsive than you normally can be. You, you can work 24 seven, but a bot can work 24 seven. And so they can help you there at least, yeah, guide people uh, to the right things and in that sense uh, chat gpt seems to be really really smart in in helping you then or at least postpone it till a time that you are available to answer the question so that people get that immediate response so i'm very impressed with that and i would love to see a lot of teams looking into those kind of like client facing solutions to see what what chat gpt could do for them mm -hmm. 
yeah, I think as as consumers, we're we're starting to get very used to it, um, as well as immediate uh, immediate attention at all hours of the day and night. So, yeah, wouldn't it be nice if you don't have to press three, four? <laughs> 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 exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, There's a lot of improvement that you can go from there. So. <laughs> I know, I know. It's um, it's really interesting how um, a lot of the frequently asked questions that people have can be conversationally put out to them instead of oh, go to your, go to my fax page and like nobody ever leaves the first page of the website. <laughs> but if <laughs> somebody popped up and started talking to you, then then yeah. absolutely, yeah. yeah so. so. Yeah, some of my um, some of my research and my work in the last like decade has been on um, the change in the legal industry itself, the change in the legal market, and what that's going to do to us lawyers out there who've spent all this time and and investment and um, education and all that to learn very traditional uh, practice ways, and then now we're coming into um, the DIY market or the assisted DIY market, the the Zoom legal and the Rocket legal and and all of that, and that's you know I feel and from my research, it's um, taken out some of the bottom rungs of the low level clerks and associates and paralegals and the lower level um, as far as the DIY market. But I'm curious about um, ChatGPT as being a tool uh, for that as well. Absolutely. I, I think, to be honest, I think it is a larger threat to something like legal Zoom than it is for like the, a small practice. Because basically you've gotten now nearly a legal Zoom for free. So you can offer your clients that like, hey, create a first version on chat TPT or, or not, like things that used to be very complicated, like as a small firm to run like a solution like legal Zoom, that's just not feasible. But now you can get pretty close to something that where your clients can do a lot of the work and take you work out of your hands and what they probably still value. And don't take it from me. This is one of the things we would need to verify <laughs> during the program is but clients like with even with like a legal Zoom or if something is computer generated, we would love for someone to go over and, and give us that green mark and a human <laughs> give the green mark like, no, this is OK, because basically you don't know what you don't know. So I think that's where you will see um, a, a huge need for people to start to do it yourself much more, uh, many more things, but then still would love to have a lawyer look over it and make sure that they have pulled the right document, they have not forgotten a clause, um, that ChatGPT did not hallucinate. So I think in that sense, it could be a fantastic tool where you collaborate with your clients on the tool and you get like a powerful machine now for, yeah, basically a penny yeah and if you look at how much investors invested in legal zoom that was uh, <laughs> quite yeah. an investment to get to get such a sophisticated uh, program and, and firm set up so uh, yeah yes of course and like you you mentioned like having that set of eyes because i've certainly been on the the other side of looking at a legal zoom contract and going wait this is what you were using Oh boy. Okay. Now we're going to, now we're going to really have to invest some money in, you know, getting you getting out of the contract that you just blanket downloaded off of the internet. Um, so definitely the, the, the skilled lawyer eye and the actual nuances of what you want to actually agree to can never be, well, I can't say never, <laughs> but can certainly not at this moment, um, be completely, completely replaced. Um, yeah. I think there's that balancing act. I think because for for most startups, taking like you have to take some risk. So it does not need to be hundred percent perfect. But at the same time, uh, so it's it's that balancing. And I think uh, with a tool like ChatGPT, hopefully that's my hope. Uh, you can do that balancing much better. But let's find out. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, and as far as innovation, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna lower the bar barrier of entry to for a lot of people that. You know, need something written really quickly and um, want to get get their business started, and hopefully they will hire an attorney to go ahead and review all that from the get go, or as soon as as soon as feasibly possible. But um, and well, speaking about as soon as possible, I think there is a, a an early bird registration for your program. Yeah. So um, 
August 1st, till August 1st, we have an early bird registration. So um, we'd love to hear from you. The best way to do so is either go to our website at organizingforinnovation.com. That's with a numeric four. Uh, or just shoot us an email at info at organizing for innovation, just like you see on the top, uh, dot com. And uh, then we'll get back to you for a quick chat because we want to set up every participant for success. So we'll, we'll ask you a few things like, are you on your own? Uh, do you have the time to participate? Um, what do you want to do? Just, just make sure that we are fit. And then you're all set to go on August 31st. And then 12 weeks later, we'll hope that you have much more clarity on the plans and what you're going to do in 2024 to take advantage of this, I would say, once in a lifetime opportunity. Uh, yeah, when it comes to technology, very exciting time to live in, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Flora, for having this conversation with me. I'm, I'm super excited to get it out to um, some people in my network who I think would be very interested. Um, and if they're not interested yet, I'll, I will certainly be talking to them about it. Uh, because it is, it is an amazing tech, it is an amazing technology and definitely something to innovate, innovate law firms, which is, you know, both of our passions. So, yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dea. I really appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs>